So no, it's fine. And you look great. Could you, uh, would you mind just kicking off, Bob, if you're ready to get started? Are you, are you good? Yep. We're okay. good. So Jeremiah, would you mind just kicking off who you are, where you're at? And I will try to speak up the whole time. I can see you might be having a little trouble hearing me, but uh, we can hear you fine. So if you just want yeah. to talk about okay. where you are and a little bit about the school, that would give us a nice way to start the whole thing, if you don't mind. Yeah, I'll kind of walk out here a little bit as I'm talking so we can start. You guys can actually see some of the school behind me. Um, so my name is Jeremiah Gibbs. Currently, I am in a village called Jungle, Kenya. It is a small village outside of the town of Thika. Uh, not much of a village to speak of. The, the biggest thing here is this school that stands behind me. Just a second, I'll kind of get a shot of the school and then I'll walk away from these geese. Uh, these are the guys from the Zoom call, but this is my son, Jeremiah Jr. Say hi real quick. So hey, man. Mic, but I'll be Good on to see you. So that's the, that's the school behind me. So great shot. We'll start great walking shot. towards the, towards the farm part of the school. So uh, the school here was started in January of 2020. Um, and so our first class went through obviously the, the pandemic year of 2020. Uh, it is a girls boarding school. Um, one thing you'll find in Kenya, I don't know if you, you know much about the school or not, Randy. Um, there's no shortage of schools in Kenya. There's lots of schools over here. But the problem is schools in Kenya, good schools cost money. And it's not something that the average family can afford for their daughter or their son to attend. So this is a private girls boarding school uh, that is has the same facilities and things that you would find in most high schools in America. We're slowly getting the rest of the things we need. Uh, so it's more of a 21st century school that we have right now 52 girls behind me inside this building that are all here on scholarship. They all come from families that would never allow them the opportunity to be able to afford to come to a place like this. Um, so our goal is to give underprivileged Kenyan young women a chance at a great education. And uh, so that's kind of the main gist of what we're doing over here. So, so, so many questions, um, Jeremiah, what's your connection yeah. to, uh, to the school and to the, to the grounds? How did you get involved? Uh, my family, we got involved in 2014. We were just wanting to do something nice, maybe, you know, donate some money overseas to do, you know, just to, just to do something to help somebody else out. Um, and we did, uh, we got in touch with a guy named George Hutchins that the school, the first time I came to this property, in fact, I looked at a picture of it the other day. Uh, it was nothing but a grass field, uh, with a fallen down building in the back, the building's still back there. We'll see when we go back there today. Uh, and they started drilling the, the well, when I was here, the borehole, the well was going in and that was in 2015. So that was pretty cool. Um, and I really came over here just cause I wanted to see where my money was going and, uh, and then from there, we just kind of fell in love with the whole idea of what they were trying to do. And uh, actually in 2020, my entire family, we came over here when the school opened and we lived here for the first three months. Uh, the school was open. I helped, I actually helped fill in as a teacher. And then we helped do some construction projects that were still ongoing at the school at the time. And uh, so that's how we got involved. And now I'm back here again. <laughs> so, and now I'm on the board, uh, with uh, Bob back there in America with the Heron Fund that uh, is, you know, we're the ones that really try to, to, to bring acknowledgement for what's going on here and obviously raise support for the, for this organization. So Jeremiah is there, um, do the girls stay like overnight? Is there lodging there? Do they come in and stay for the week or is it just a no, daily it, school? It, no, it, it's a boarding school. So they're here the entire term. Um, their parents drop them off. Some of them don't even have their parents drop them off. Some of them literally show up by public transportation or they're walking as they're coming here. Uh, and they're here from the time uh, the term starts. So you're looking at about three months in Kenya. Every three months, there's a break. Uh, and they'll either get a one week break or a two week break and they'll go back home for that break. Uh, and so, no, they're here. They, they live here. Uh, the kitchen is right behind me there that small building over my shoulder that's actually the kitchen uh so all their meals are it you know they're here they're here 24 7 um in fact my kid and me were just talking about the fact that they never get to leave as an american his idea of never being able to leave the school is a little rough on him <laughs> he's like they can't walk down there. 
there's a small shop, a little block building about a half mile down the road. You can walk to and buy a soda. He's like, they can't do that. I'm like, no, they're not allowed outside the gate. <laughs> so, so it is generally um, a fit, a fenced property and um, safe for the girls and, and all those. Yeah there's, there. uh, yeah. there's an eight foot block wall that goes all the way around the compound. Um, so inside the compound here, in fact, let me, can I switch my camera? I don't know. Yeah, you should be able oh, to yeah, hold on. It, I think. Yep. You guys don't need to see me as much. All right. So right there, that's the front gate. So you, you come in that gate and this is your school. So it's right now, currently it's a two-story school. The way it's built right now, we can actually hold 120 students here. We can board 120 students. We have the living space, the bathrooms, shower facilities, and the classrooms for 120. Um, and then you can see the coming off the fence there, you can see that, that stone wall uh, back there behind us. That is the staff housing that phase one is done. So actually the teachers all live on that first floor back there. Um, the next couple of years, we'll have a second story to build on top of that as we have teachers. Um, obviously, the clothes line. So there's the kitchen. Next to the kitchen, you've got water tanks. So we've got two types of water here on the property. We have a well that produces water. The well we drilled, though, to hit water was extremely deep when we drilled it. Uh, the water has a very high, it's not sulfur, it's a... Uh, uh, What's the, they added to our water in America? What what is it called? It just uh, we had we had fluoride in the United States. Fluoride. I know that. fluoride. It has whatever the natural component of fluoride is. It has a very high concentration of that, so it's actually too high to really drink. So in this container here is potted water, uh, potable water that we actually we get from the county. And then during the rainy season, you can see coming from the eave. They actually collect water in it to drink the rainwater. Uh, so the well water would require a system to be put in to, rem to remove that uh, that high fluoride content. So, um, and then this is the dining hall that's under construction. It's up and it's part way done. So this is gonna be the dining hall. And back there, kind of, I guess we're talking the farm so I can show you the livestock. So, Eventually, hopefully in the next year, these are going to be moved from inside the compound. We're going to do a better way of securing them outside the compound. Uh, but, you know, obviously they don't want the animals stolen. So, we've got a rabbit barn. They're raising rabbits for meat. Um, breeding. And then yep. goats and chickens, too, right now. So... I think the goats are actually out in the farm area right now, but you got those geese that keep honking, and then you've got chicken houses as well. There's a couple of random turkeys that walk around here. So do you otherwise for groceries and, you know, everyday food from milk to, to anything else that uh, uh, the staff and the girls need, where does that come from? So the dry, yeah, like dry goods, uh, flour, salt, right. things like that. Uh, it's going to come from Thika. It's going to come from town. Uh, it's about a 30 minute drive from here. Um, rice. I know the cook when I was in there with her this afternoon, she's got a 50 pound bag of rice. That she's using. Um, so they go to town and they buy that stuff. The goal for the school is really, they, they want to get to a point and we, when we go out to the farm, you'll see that they've got the land. If we can just figure out a way to use it right. Um, for us to, for the school to be able to only have to purchase basically dry goods, you know, flour, uh, rice, things like that. Uh, the milk actually is local. They go, there's a guy, uh, that little shop I said, you can go down and buy a soda. That's where the milk comes from. He's got a couple dairy cows. The guy milks cow. He milks his dairy cows every morning. And so the maintenance man, Michael from the school every morning walks down there and buys a bag of milk and brings it back. So um, so why don't you, could you talk a little bit more about, uh, I know you're looking to, to use some land and grow some crops. What's the plans or what's been the success in the past? Okay. Let me flip this back around here again. We're going to go through the gate out to the farm. 
All right, so I'm walking out the back gate of the school. So it's a 10-acre property. Okay. The school itself, the compound area, eats up about two of those acres. So we've got roughly eight acres, I think just under eight acres behind us. It goes behind that building you can see there. It actually goes back behind that. Um, and it is fenced in. Even the farm is completely fenced in. You can see the fencing going around it. Uh, the wires. Hey, Bob. Hey. So, um, <laughs> did we lose Randy or just switched over no, to no. you for some reason? No, he's, okay. he's, he, he's got a dog in the background that took over the microphone for a second. Oh, okay. That's how it works. Okay. Yeah. It's just you all got sudden geese, I got a dog. <laughs> so uh, that's it, man. I'd rather have a dog than geese. And they got a, a rooster that crows at four o'clock in the morning. The sun's nowhere near coming up at four o'clock. <laughs> Um, so this is the farm and I know right now, and I just sent Bob a text yesterday. I got here, uh, when I was here in January of 2020, what, you, what you're looking at was green. Okay. Um, the soil is not great here, but it does grow. Uh, and so they were able to grow earlier this year. They had a really bad flood, um, okay. that basically it drowned all the crops. And as soon as that flood passed, Kenya went into a drought. So like right now, if you look like even, uh, you can't really see through the, through the screen, but if you actually take in, uh, if you walk, like go out and I'm looking at like the neighbors have a grass field and it's all brown where typically it would be green. Um, so when the drought hit, they had a hard time trying to get their crops because even though we have a well, we, we don't have a good irrigation system here. Um, They've been digging some trenches to help alleviate the chance of the, of the property flooding again in the future. Um, I kind of walk out here. Hopefully I don't lose you. They, uh, everybody swears the internet is just as great out here in the field as it is up in school. Uh, is the wind blocking my microphone or can you guys hear me okay? You're, you're fine. There's a little wind, but we're okay. Okay. Um, so, yeah, kind of walk out here. I can kind of show you the trench. So what the soil makeup here is, is you've got about one meter of dirt on top of a big slab of stone that goes down. The deepest hole we've ever dug here was for the septic system. It's 15 feet down and we never got out of that stone. And when I say stone, it's solid rock. It's not rocks, it's solid. So uh, we've actually brought in a couple, last year we brought in a couple truckloads of manure uh, to add to the, the one meter of dirt that we actually have here. It's a clay, black clay topsoil that they have. Um, but you can see kind of they've got the trenches that they're starting to dig out, uh, kind of a grid pattern, and they're getting it prepped. And they've already tilled the land up, getting it prepped for replanting. And they're telling me that here in about three weeks, we should see the rains come back. And that's when they'll be able to start replanting this property. So, hey, Randy, what yep. do you think of one meter of, of dirt? Well, you know, it depends on where you are in the United States. Obviously, we have we have some, uh, you know, a lot of topsoils around that are, um, you know, less than a foot of topsoil. But then you go into, you know, your subsurface soils are are not all rock, although you do get in that and actually. My house is on a is on a lot lot like that. You go down you go down a couple of feet, and we just hit we hit stone here on the side of this hill. But generally speaking, Jeremiah, you know most of the United States that's productive yeah. farm ground has has a lot of yeah. uh, very less soil. And you know, and I I can see that that you yeah. know even even in the picture and the farmers that will watch this, I mean you can see that you know it's got quite a bit of stones in it and and different things like that so you know all soils can be helped with yeah. with whether it's manure or other um ingredients can be added um but uh that yeah. all take that all takes money and, and accessibility right so it you know. it, yeah it does yeah um yeah so like here's the septic tank up here and when i say stone i was here as these guys chiseled this wow. out of to make that hole yeah. So yeah, it's, I've never been, like I said, yeah, I've lived a lot of places too. I do construction back in America. Um, yeah, I've never been anywhere where literally I can come out here. In fact, I joked around about the school, you know, cause a lot of times you build a building like this 
I talked to him. I said, well, is it strong? Is the foundation strong enough to hold a third floor? You know, it's a lot of concrete and steel. And uh, the, con- the contractor's like, yeah, it's sitting on stone. So basically for a foundation for all these buildings you see around me, all they do is dig a meter down to where they get rid of all the dirt that's sitting on top of that rock and they pour concrete on top of that rock. Yeah. That's <laughs> So, so it, makes it, it makes it great for building houses. Right. Let me ask you a couple of things, just quick questions for you. The, the girls that are there, do yep. they all generally come from what you would call a, a, an agricultural, do they come from farms? Do they, do they, have they had exposure to growing their own yes, food uh, prior to being so, in school? Yes. A, a, a portion of them. I would tell you that if you interviewed them, yes, they would. Uh, quite a few of them, though, they come from, uh, I know we've got a handful that actually come from, like, the slums around Nairobi, uh, which are basically, like, shanty towns. Um, so they're probably, if they're growing anything, they're growing, you know, one tomato plant inside right. their living room or something, you right. know, inside their shack. Uh, but, yeah, in, in fact, we have an agricultural class. Like, Kenya, part of their school curriculum is actually an agricultural class. And so part of that ag class is teaching these girls how to farm, um, how to, you know, how to raise crops, how, to, in fact, I was even talking to the teacher today, uh, as I interviewed the teachers, part of my being over here, uh, about, cause you know, fruits are very prevalent here, bananas, obviously we can't grow bananas where we're at because the soil is not deep enough. Um, but we're, we want to, we want to get in some orange trees, uh, oranges grow very well in this region. Um, so we want to plant some orange trees and we were even talking about teaching the girls how to do, uh, how to do cut trees, and, you know, and to restart a new tree instead of a seed started out with, you know, doing grafting and stuff like that. Um, right. so, uh, yeah, so there, one, you know, one of the things we talked about here was possibly doing hey, Jeremiah, a, go where there's a better a, signal. Yeah, we kind of kind of um, lost you know, your signal something. just a little bit. Okay, am I losing? Yeah. yeah. Uh, let me. Yeah. You've seen a dirt. You've seen a dirt lot. Let me walk yeah. back in towards the school. Okay. Uh, just give it a quick second. Is that is it coming in better now? You bet. You bet. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'll just stay in here by the school. So. Um. But yeah. So greenhouse is something we talked about, and like I said, but. Like even during the drought right now, you know, I, I was talking to, you know, Jacinta, the, the, the madam that runs the school, uh, who's not an agricultural person at all. She's a professional. She's a teacher, um, you know, and I was talking to her about her ir- about irrigation. I mean, we have a well with endless water and, you know, we can we can pump all the water we want to to irrigate our crops. And so I don't know if the fix is a, uh, you know, a, a good irrigation system that runs the water you know to the plots um or a greenhouse that we can control the soil better in yeah maybe some uh, of both some of both i'm not sure what the uh it would be interesting maybe we could we could help get you an answer on uh, on ag wiki to learn a little bit more about what fluoride does to uh, high levels of fluoride might do to crops or soils okay. And what kind of impact that could have to give you a sense of, you know, how much of that water is actually usable um, for irrigation purposes. I'm assuming it is, but uh, then also yeah. there's always filtration systems that I'm sure yeah. are, uh, are, are are expensive and difficult to uh, probably get your hands on. So. Jeremiah, yeah. Do yeah. Have the, Jeremiah, do you have the Jeremiah? Do you have the water testing available? Can you bring that back with you? Uh, yeah, we have, they, they had it tested. So I'm assuming they have it on file. So yeah, I can get a copy of the, the water test and bring it back with me for sure. All right. And so, then the other thing is, could you go ahead and get some bids on a greenhouse? Yeah, we can for sure. Oh, uh, that's definitely something we could look at doing. Um, and I just, you know, cause like I said, I guess to me, a greenhouse is just one of those things. Cause we're not, you know, they're, they're not trying to be commercial farmers. They're just trying, you know, which I guess if you're feeding 120 kids a day plus staff, you're almost becoming a commercial farmer. Um, but yeah, you know, so even a couple greenhouses to be able to, regardless of what the weather is, there's always food. Cause like right now there's absolutely no, nothing out there. So like right now the, the school's eating up the cost of having to buy vegetables in town. Um, 
you know, and you see the effect of it, uh, like lunch today. Uh, actually, my son pointed out the fact that the meal they ate, they eat for lunch, everything's the same day. Uh, it's called githeri. It's beans and corn. Uh, is there anything else in it? Cabbage. Beans, corn, and cabbage. And it normally has potatoes in it. And today there was no potatoes in it. So I, I don't know if they're short on potatoes. I just went and bought potatoes for me to cook tonight. And they were twice the cost they were this time last year when I was here. So Well, Jeremiah, let me ask you a question, and Randy, too. If we're going to get to 150 people, Randy, we can't do it on eight acres, no matter what we plant. No, you can't, but you can greatly subsidize uh, fruits and vegetables. Uh, you can really have an impact on those. You know, I don't know how often meat is in the diet, Jeremiah, you know, actual. Once a week, Friday once a week. night. Yeah. So, once you know, th those are yeah. the kind of things that I know in that area, just from a past experiences are difficult. Uh, to get your hands on and also very expensive but uh you know fruits and vegetables from a greenhouse standpoint and also outside the greenhouse if you have the water you know and again it's how much can you pump a minute there's all those kinds of questions that come into play that you know we yeah. can absolutely get you the answers to and help you figure that stuff out um but from a greenhouse standpoint you know if you did a if you did one or two, even small greenhouses, you could really subsidize what the girls are eating. If not, if not for a full year, at least a portion of the year, um, you know, and maybe even yeah. some sweet corn as well. But, you know, the other thing that I'm sure you all deal with there is that you start growing some of these um, tender crops uh, out on a field like that. And there's probably, um, you know, rodents and other things that come along just like we deal with here in the United States on sweet corn that that love to consume those types of crops so that's another benefit of a greenhouse yeah. environment yeah well that was actually one of the reasons they gave me when I asked why they didn't replant during this drought because we have the water um they said that with everything else being dead around here if we like if we planted crops out here even with the drought that it would be very hard to keep pests away yeah. because it's the only green, it's the only green plants around. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, again, the, va the value of a greenhouse and I, and, and so Bob, you know, of course the answer back to your, your question is that eight acres can be a lot uh, for certain crops and, you know, some, some vegetables and stuff, but as far as, a, you know, a continually feeding that group, that size group of people, it's pretty tough. Right. Yeah. What, one thing I will say on this part of Kenya, and I don't, I don't know, Randy, if, you've, if you're familiar, I'm, basically, I'm in central Kenya, okay? So we're an hour and a half north of Nairobi is where we're at. Um, but like when I was here in the spring of 2020, like the corn, they actually harvested corn while I was here. And they had corn that was about six inches tall growing. And they had corn that was knee high. And so they actually had corn, like where I'm from, you know, like I grew up in Michigan. Like you plant, you know, you plant. And if you don't plant by a certain time, you're not going to harvest anything. You get one shot to grow it for the year. Uh, we're here, obviously, overusing your soil. I understand enough about agriculture to, to play an effect. You, you don't want to overplant, but they can grow year round. Yeah. You know, obviously, this year, you know, it, the drought's kind of messing with them. Um, but their, their climate is made to grow year round here. Um, yep. Well, so, you know, and, especially and for things like corn. Yeah, that's important. And it's important. It's important to know, uh, you know, because one of the things that, you know, even here in the United States and other parts of the world, we're becoming very knowledgeable around what rotational crops, you know, we've always known that growing corn all the time can be hard on your soil and rotating it with soybeans and alfalfa. But there's many, yeah. many other cover crops that actually have some food and feed value um, that also yeah. could be uh, uh, valuable to the soil, put nutrients back in the soil. So, you know, the, it, it is a, uh, um, it's, it's a complicated little process, but it's not difficult once you kind of get into a pattern. Uh, and that's value that I'd love to have us uh, help you with and, and add to a little bit, so. Uh, Jeremiah, has the soil been yeah. tested? I would tell you, I, I, I would say no, I've never heard of it being tested. Um, I mean, we definitely could get it tested uh, to find out 
and uh, what we're actually dealing with here. Yeah. You, you can, hey, girl. The Come water, here. the Bob, the water test, like you said, would be very valuable to have, you know, to know what the water is. And then also, um, you know, having the soil tested would be great. Okay. Does he bring back a sample or does he? Actually, he do I, it there? I, I bet he can't bring back a sample. Yeah. I'm not right. going through cuss. I'd rather go through with a bag of Coke than dirt. <laughs> <laughs> hey, real, hey, real quick, Bob, Bob. The quote for the day, hey, real, Jeremiah. Yeah, real, real quick, guys. I got somebody that wants to say hi to you. Say hi, girls. Hi, everybody. That's fantastic. Now, these, these, are a couple, these are a couple gentlemen back in America that I'm talking to. So these are these are our ninth grade girls. They just finished an exam. And so I think they're going to take a break, right? All right, girls. Well, hey, you're good. You can go ahead. Thank you, ladies. Hi, so girls. When, Bye, girls. When, so when did they start, for example, what grade did they come to the school? Uh, we're a high school, so we're 9 through 12. Okay, so, so this is their, their first year. Yes, so these yeah. girls here, for most of them, this is their first time, like, being away from home. Um, yeah, this is, they. you know, they've lived at home with mom and dad, and then they get sent to a boarding school to go to high school. Okay. Well, Bob, is there um, a chance here that is there is just, I don't want to make it, commercial by any means but we want to give people the opportunity to give if they choose to is there a website that we can add to this uh that people can go to and contribute or is that something that's not yet created how are you guys doing that go ahead jeremiah uh yeah so they can definitely bob if you can get randy the information to the heron fund website yeah i'll send it um, to him yeah so yeah the heron fund is the 501c we have in, in America that Bob and me are on the board of that uh, that supports the school. And okay. so, yeah, so we take and yeah, you could definitely get that information and link them to come over here. And I think even on the Heron Fund, it's got like different projects so that somebody can sponsor a specific project. I think it's set up that way, right, Bob? Yes, it is. Oh, you can okay. sponsor a child. You can sponsor. There's different sponsorships. Yeah. Okay. And the other yeah. thing really that we, that Jeremiah and I both love is that we're tracking every cent every penny and you know there's no admin cost you know bare minimum of anything but i i don't know the number jeremiah but i would say 99 percent is going to the girls yeah i mean yeah everything in whatever fashion is supporting these students i mean you've got six teachers that live on site but i mean everything we send here i, I bought my own plane ticket to come here like we we don't have overhead at all. Uh, it's every, every cent that's raised, like, comes directly to the school and to these girls at the school. Well, I think it's great, and I appreciate the uh, um, the tour. I, I did have one question pop in my head. What besides corn? You mentioned corn, and what else, crop wise, food wise, food crop? Cabbage. Okay. Cabbage is a big one. Tomatoes. Uh, potatoes, carrots, um, are those are the staples over here. Uh, onions, those are the uh, the staple things. They they eat a lot of kale. I'm assuming it's local. I've never I didn't I don't remember seeing it on the farm in January when I was here. Um, but they eat a lot of kale, so it's got to be a local thing because they eat too much of it for it not to be for it to be imported. Um, so. Yeah, that's that's their big ones. And then, like I said, their corn, I mean, corn and beans are yep. 90 percent what they eat. So, Jeremiah, we didn't see any equipment of any kind. I'm assuming that you either <laughs> you, <laughs> shovels and hose. What do you <laughs> OK? I could. Uh, yeah. So, no, there's no equipment. Actually, there's a broken like disc back here off a tractor that looks like it's been ripped apart to where. It's actually small enough now that a human being can pull it. Um, so I think that somewhere along the lines, since I was here last, they actually took a disc and converted it into being a human disc right here. I'll show it to you. So, uh, that, so that eight that eight acres is hand cultivated? Hand cultivated. Yes, sir. Right there. So they broke this disc down into four sections. So like it's literally like one and the other section of it is out there with a stick hook to it. So, so that's um, a, 
So are there are there neighboring farms? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, most everybody around here grows their own farm. Like I just walked down the road today and I saw a, husband, a guy and his wife out working the, the garden around there. So the average Kenyan owns a plot and a plot is going to be yeah. about 100 by 100, 100 feet yeah. by 100 feet. Um, so no, it'd be 100 meters by 100 meters. I'm sorry. So that's their plot. And then it, they completely compounded in uh, the like the stone walls that go around the, the school here. That's I mean, almost every home down here has those walls up for protection. Uh, it's one of the safest places I've ever traveled to in my life. I mean, obviously, I've got my son standing here with me, um, but there's no no law enforcement to speak of. Like the police aren't even like if we call them. They probably wouldn't even drive out here to the school or if they did, they'd want gas money when they got here. Um, so everybody builds concrete barricades around where they live uh, and then. Outside of your house, every ounce of your yard is farm. So, you know, they, they, they maximize their use. But, yeah, there's, there's local, like, small farms. There's no real large farms in this area. The only large farm is on the kind of about 30 minutes away, 45 minutes away. Uh, the only, like, commercial agriculture stuff you find here is uh, pineapples. Okay. So they grow, yeah, they, they grow a lot of pineapples in this region. But again, that's, that's probably about a 30, 45 minute drive away from where I'm at right now. Um, so I'm assuming the soil content's a little bit different there for pineapples um, than what we have where we're at. Uh, most of it's just small. Like even when you go to town to like buy vegetables, uh, yeah, I'm not going to a supermarket. You're just buying them off the side of the road from somebody that's obviously grown them at their house and they brought them out there to sell them that day. Hey Jeremiah, okay. how much is an acre of land there? Uh, it's, it's expensive. Uh, no, no, I was just talking to the guy this morning. Uh, what did they pay for their plot? They gave almost the equivalent of like eight thousand US for one of those plots I just described. Wow, a hundred by hundred meter. Yeah. Oh, I wonder how big that is compared to an acre, but well, uh, yeah, much yeah, less half acre. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, not, land wow. here. Maybe, maybe not half, but um, yeah. So think of a football yeah. field with the end zones, Bob, is kind of an acre. So uh, yeah. it, it wouldn't be, it would it would be similar. A hundred by hundred meters would probably be similar to an acre. All right. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and again, and, and it's not, it's just all, you know, there's nothing, nothing here. There's no water on your property when you do that. There's, you know, there's nothing there. Uh, most people here don't have water access still. Uh, there's a county water line that runs down the road, but a lot of people don't buy it. Um, you know, they get they get rain, they collect rainwater and they store it in them black tanks like you see around here. And uh, so, which first couple times I was in Kenya, I drank out of those tanks anyway. So I guess you're okay. <laughs> so how long? How long, you how long are you staying? How long are you staying? This this is a short trip. Uh, we're we're here nine days total, so we're out of here next week. Um, so this, this trip was very pointed. And uh, so, I, I mean, I'd, I'd live here full time if I could. So uh, it's just a great, it's a great, great group of people. They're, they're hardworking. Uh, they want, you know, it's just one of those places in the world where everybody you meet just wants a better life. You know, all these girls, they're here because they want a better life. <laughs> I mean, they put in, they do eight classes a day. We are talking today. Their, their schoolwork starts at 530 in the morning. That's when they're doing wow. like that t studying and test they take a break at seven for breakfast which is porridge which looks kind of like watered down cream of wheat um and then they they're in class until well they just got done so they just walked out here so it's four thir it's four thirty in the afternoon so yeah well, we, no they put can... in the hours and then on saturdays they're in class on saturdays <laughs> study here. And, yeah, they have fun they're we... saying they we could try that here in the United States, Jeremiah, <laughs> and see how it would go. Yeah, yeah I, I, my son is already against it. He's he's yeah. already he, he asked me. They're, yeah. they're taking exams today, and like when they're done with it, it's a two and a half hour test. You have two and a half hours, but when you finish it, you can't get up. So if you're smart and you get it done super quick, you're still sitting there for another two. You're, you're there until the two and a half hours is up. Wow. Yeah. It's, uh, the education's very serious over here. Uh, I mean, they're very adamant about it. Um, you know, but at the same time, like the girls, when they're off too, like they're not off, like they work the farm. So right. like when I was here and they harvested the corn, they were shelling the corn by hand. They had the students shelling the corn by hand. 
Um, we we got a sheller over here, and so I, I I've showed them how to use it. So hopefully the next time they're able to harvest corn, they can shell it with the sheller. We have an old school one like you like you had on a small farm in America back in the early century there. So yeah. Yeah. Well, I, so let me tell you, it's 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 an awakening a bit because um, I think, you know, here in the United States, we we hear about agricultural areas like this, um, but I think too often, just kind of um, hear it in passing and kind of let it flow off our back, uh, and and don't necessarily seek to engage in resolving it. And I think there's so much that could be done, and we just have to find those paths. You know, it, it's uh, it, the the no equipment thing is is so hard to hear about, but it's also sounds like it's almost it's still part of the culture they, to be. Yeah, it, and I mean, I can I, I can kind of not to cut you off, right, but on that no equipment, they, they don't they don't necessarily want the equipment. Yeah, um, that's what I mean. first, it's part of the culture. The first, yep. Yeah, the first it, it would put people out of a job. So like when we brought in we brought in a truckload of manure. In the, they didn't want it inside the school compound because it, it was smelled terrible. So they dumped it along the side of the road out front and we hired 10 people. I think most of them ended up just being women, local women. And they had like feed sacks, like the, you know, burlap feed sacks or whatever. And they would go out there, they'd fill the sack up, put it on their back, carry it out to the farm, dump it in the field and then go back. And they, I mean, it took them about a week to get that entire dump truck load of manure to the field. But we paid them daily, and yeah, it's a source of income. Like the farm, when we have to till the property, we hire extra farm. They hire extra hands from the local community, and they show up with their hoe and their shovel, and you till yeah. the you till the land. Yeah, yeah. and uh, well, just just quickly, I mean, part of the idea with Ag Wiki is is my company is to is to bring people together around issues like this to help people all over the world know how to grow and raise food, uh, you know, using less water, less impact on the soil, those kinds of things. So it feels like it's, it's something that, uh, that our, our, our users of our site uh, will be interested in. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll stay in communication with you. And I, I think, Bob, if you could pass Jeremiah's email, I could flip you guys this video and, uh, and we'll edit it a couple of times and, and make some shorter clips out of it, but I I think you'll you'll enjoy seeing yourself with the hat and without the hat, Jeremiah. Actually, yeah, yeah. No, and, and what you guys? Oh, your dog, Bob. Uh, Man. Sorry, um, they're outside. But, uh, but yeah, what? No, I, I kind of looked over your website, Ag Week, and that's really I think I think a place like this is exactly who needs that help. They've got the property, they've got the willingness to do it, and the desire. It's just getting some good information to them, the best way to utilize what they've got, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's uh, let's see what we can do. And I appreciate your time so much. And Bob, thank you for making this no happen. Problem, and, thank and, you, Randy. Uh, we'll get yes, thank uh, you. We'll get some things moving. And Godspeed, man. Fly safe. You and your son coming uh, back. And uh, uh, yes, yeah, thank you. You're doing great. Work. Uh, have a great day.